Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the inverse trig functions part so we can answer questions from exercise 6e. So, um, just a little bit of new notation to get us started then. Arc sine, arc cos and arc tan. Maybe you've seen this before. The arc part is looking for the inverse function of sine, cos and tan. If you remember the way that we currently use is sine with a power of minus 1. Now you could either think of this as x to the minus 1, where you're thinking of it as 1 over x, or you're thinking of it as f minus 1, where f is a function and f minus 1 notates the inverse function. This is how we would like it to be remembered as, sine minus 1 is an inverse function. So just to avoid confusion, people are now writing arc sine, arc cos and arc tan, so we don't get it confused with this 1 over function like it is in indices. So what we need to be able to do with these functions is draw them. However, an inverse function can only be a function for a 1 to 1 function. Um, just a reminder that if you do find the inverse function, then you're reflecting the graph in the y equals x line, and then a many to one function, which the sine, cos, and tan functions are, will become a one to many function, and one to many functions are not allowed as functions by the definition of functions. So a little bit of a technicality there, but you have to restrict the um, theta values for you to be able to find an inverse function of sine, cos, and tan. That's why on your calculator you don't get an infinite set of answers when you use sine minus 1. You only get the answers within a certain range. So let's have a look at the sine graph. The sine graph looks like this for part of the graph. It will carry on waving from left to right and right to left. Um, but this is the part of the graph that we're looking at. In this, in this region from here to here, we have a one-to-one -one function. So we can find the inverse of this function. So we're having to restrict it between pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 so that we have an inverse, so that we have a one-to-one -one function that we can inverse. The graph of an inverse function um, is reflected in the line y equals x. So do a y equals x line in dots and then reflect your graph in this line. So this here is the graph of y equals arc sine x. The highest point it reaches is pi by 2, and the lowest point it reaches is minus pi by 2. So the range of the arc sine function, remember, is the same as the domain of the original function, and the range of the sine function is the same as the domain of the inverse function. Let's do the same for cos and tan then. So cos um, has to be restricted between 0 up to pi radians so that it is a one-to-one -one function and then we can inverse that function. So now what we do is we draw in the dotted line of y equals x and reflect it in that line. So 1 comes down to here, pi by 2 goes up to there and pi down here will come up to here at the coordinate minus 1. So it's all reflected in that line there. So the blue graph here is the graph for y equals arc cos x. And the tan graph, well the tan graph um, only needs restricting in between its asymptotes, minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. And draw in your line for y equals x and then reflect it in that line there. And this is what the shape of the graph looks like here. Okay, now in fact we are, because we've reflected, we are going to get asymptotes that are now horizontal. Okay, so we've now got horizontal asymptotes at pi by 2 and minus pi by 2, just like we did with them vertically. They've now reflected over, so it's now horizontal asymptotes. And just a reminder then that the domain for the original function has turned into the range for the inverse, and the range for the original function is now the domain for the inverse function. So these are a summary of what the trigonometric, inverse trigonometric graphs look like. Right, so let's get on to doing some work with um, using these functions. So work out in radians the value of arc sine 0.5. Arc sine means sine inverse so you can just do on your calculator sine minus 1, 0 0.5, and maybe you've remembered it, 
pi by 6. So if we go another one, arc tan root 3. So arc tan is referring to the inverse of tan, tan minus 1 of root 3. And maybe you've remembered it, pi by 3. Or 60 degrees. Next one, arc sine of minus root 2 over 2. So you can either do this in your calculator, or you can remember that um, uh, when we do the inverse, it's sine minus 1. And for sine, we can take the negative out. That would be 45 degrees. But because it's on the negative part, it's going to be on the negative part of the sine graph. So it's minus pi by 4. So this is what I was talking about here, the pi by 2. Sorry, the root 2 over 2 angle is going to give us pi by 4. But if it's minus root 2 over 2, then it's going to give us negative pi by 4. So in this case here, the answer is negative pi by 4 or negative 45 degrees. So you can see this here that if we're looking for minus um, root 2 over 2, find root 2 over 2 normally. But then because the sine graph works in this way here, where it's rotationally symmetric around the point 0, 0, 180 degrees, it's going to be minus pi by 4. OK, in this case here, a little bit more of a tricky question here, cos <coughs> of arc sine minus 1. So let's first find the arc sine of minus 1. So in this case here, arc sine minus 1 will give us... Um, what will it give us? It will give us minus pi by 2. And then cos of minus pi by 2 will give us cos of pi by 2, which will give us 0. Now you can type most of this into your calculator, but it will be good if you show your steps as you work through it. OK, so let's have a go at these two questions here then. So pause the video and try these two out. OK, so in my opinion, these two questions here are not too bad, really. We just have to work out what the inverse cos of a half is and then sign the answer. So what cos angle gives us a half as its answer? 60 degrees does. So in this case here, 60 degrees is the answer to the inside of the bracket. Sine 60 is then root 3 over 2. Good. And part B, tan of, um, so arc cos of minus root 2 over 2. A little bit more tricky this because it's a negative. Let's just imagine the uh, cos graph. It's going to be minus root 2 over 2. Um, root 2 over 2 normally would be 45 degrees. So I imagine it here is going to be 135 degrees, <coughs> a rotational symmetry around this point here. The 90 degree point. So I reckon this is going to be 135. Now tan of 30, 135, well it's going to be in the negative part of the graph here. We've got 180 here. Um, 135 is slap bang in the middle of 90 and 180. So a little bit of rotational symmetry around this point here will give you the 45 degree point here, which is a value 1. So it's probably going to be minus 1. You can always check these in your calculator just to make sure you've got them right. OK, so not too bad here. Um, do have a go at answering some of the problem solving and exam style questions in this exercise, though. Um, uh, persevere through the difficult ones. Ask your teacher for help if you need any. And thanks for watching.